Little toads with shovels on their feet that sometimes go two years without seeing the light of day. This is the Spadefoot Toad, and maybe the most interesting and unique amphibian I've ever heard about. So today, let's go over what makes Spadefoot Toads so darn cool, why do they have shovels on their feet? I'm Adam, you're watching Wicked's Wicked Reptiles, stick around. Spadefoot toads are very unique. These are not like any other toad. They're not like the American toads that you find if you're from the United States or Canada, for example. And if you're wondering if these are a rare toad and that's why you've never heard of them, maybe? No. Literally, these guys you can find all over Canada, the US, and Mexico. And there's a different genus of spadefoot toads in Europe and part of Africa as well. These guys are found all over the world. Now, this is a North American spadefoot toad. I'm not exactly sure which spadefoot toad it is. I think it's a plain spadefoot toad. There are seven or eight genus, or seven or eight species, I should say, in the genus, uh, the North American genus, and then there's the European genus as well. So if this is a plain spadefoot toad, like I think it is, that would mean that it comes from the prairies. It comes from southern parts of, the, of Canada, Alberta and Manitoba, Saskatchewan, and the northern part of the U.S. Uh, in, the, in the states that those provinces border. But these guys can be found in different species of spadefoot toads in parts of Arizona, they can be found in Florida, they can be found in Mexico. These guys are literally everywhere in North America. So while some species like this one might go six months underneath a frozen pond, there are other ones like the Couch's Spadefoot Toad that live in parts of Arizona that will be under ponds also for up to two years until they can find rain. And because of that, Spadefoot Toads, if you want to breed them, breed very quick. The way that these guys breed and the rate that they breed at, we're talking about within weeks from copulation to little toadlets emerging from the tadpoles. It's actually unbelievable. These guys are so unique and they are a little bit different than most toads. In fact, they're not a true toad at all just simply because they don't have those sacs behind, or those glands, I should say, behind their eyes that most toads do that secrete a toxin. So lacking paratoid glands, and also the fact they've got vertical pupils, which is very different from most toads. If you look at, say, an American toad, uh, they're not gonna have that, they're gonna have a round pupil, where these guys are gonna do most of their hunting during the nighttime, they're crepuscular, right? Not truly nocturnal, but crepuscular. Most of the species of spadefoot toads that you'll find in North America, and also they've got this keratinous type like little projection on the back of their foot and it's hard for me to show you i'll show you a picture here and that just helps them dig because a lot of the places that they live will have tough soils they'll have um sort of like this rocky a little bit more difficult to burrow into and like all toads they bury burrow in backwards first is that back first but first it's very funny that the way that they do it you've probably seen other toads do this most toads bury in just like this they kind of uh shimmy just kind of kind of like this you know i'm just really happy to have been able to get spadefoot toads they're not really common in the hobby at all um you're gonna see american toads a lot more frequently but i think these guys might make better pets they've got this smooth skin they're a little bit slower moving, as you can see. And being amphibians, you wouldn't want to hold them all the time. I mean, it, toads are frogs after all. Uh, but just for the purpose of this video, with my very clean hands, as we've all been washing forever and ever, because, well, obviously, this is a female spadefoot toad. And I actually have another one, too. I got a pair. I got a male. And he's a little bit bigger. He's a little bit more hoppy. You can see him here. He's a little bit harder to tame, which is why I've got toadette. And this is toad. Toad and Toadette. Toadette has a fresh bowl of mealworms down there, so we'll let her get back to it with Toad. But here's why I think that maybe you, if you're looking for a Toad species or a frog species or some sort of amphibian, might love Spadefoot Toads. Oh, and by the way, I got these Toads from a subscriber, which is really cool. Uh, literally just a Kijiji deal. Kijiji is a Canadian version of Craigslist. I saw them on there, wicked deal. Guy shows up to my house, knew who I was. Very cool. So thank you very much, Matt. I appreciate you uh, giving me the opportunity to buy these, these toads. These may be one of the most interesting, unique, and easy pets to take care of. What you'll see here, this is just their quarantine bin because I've only had them for about a month now. So just a few more weeks of quarantine before we put them into the reptile room. But you can have them in a bin like this. I just have them in one of these. It's locking and has some ventilation on the sides and on the top. Uh, just because, you know, they do like a lot of moisture. Moisture is 
great for all amphibians, of course, although they do come from an arid environment. You'll never find them just out basking in the middle of the day. That's not what toads do. They will find damp places to hide and only come out generally when it's raining, uh, and then they spend most or all of their time around lakes and ponds. So give them a really nice place that's not too hot, not too cool, uh, but has a lot of moisture for them as well. And I mean, in terms of setup, you could have them in a glass enclosure if you want. If this is something, if you want something that's going to be all over the cage, all the time, during the day, during the night, and something that's able to be seen, uh, spadefoot toads are not the toad for you. These guys are going to bury themselves into the substrate most of the time. Uh, I just kind of have a little mix here, coconut fiber and some forest floor and some Exoterra products. And then some bark that I got outside and I boiled. Uh, and then of course also a water bowl, a food bowl. And then I cultivated some moss as well just to keep the humidity up. I think the entire thing to put together took me about 10 minutes, you know, like not, not very long at all. But you could have a very elaborate type of setup in an Exoterra front opening enclosure, or a 10 gallon aquarium would be fine for two of them, or 20 if you wanted it to be more elaborate. But all in all, these guys have been a pleasure to watch, a pleasure not to handle as much as just kind of take them out and observe them. They don't really hop as much. I know that, you know, with toads and frogs, you see them hopping all the time in the cartoons or whatever, or out in the field if you go herping. But these guys, they just have this weird locomotion. The locomotion that they have is very different, very unique. And although the male did do quite a bit of hopping, it was hard to get him. I had him just on this ironing board with a light trying to get some good footage of them. He was hopping all over the place. He was more than happy to just be all over the place. Where the female here, Toadette, she was just kind of like, yeah, it's cool. This is my good side, <laughs> you know? So I think these guys are really cool. They're not super fast. Um, if you want something for a child that they're probably not gonna touch anyway, but want to observe, these guys might be right for them. And if you're like me and you have a hognose snake and you need something to scent the pinkies with because it's a baby that won't eat, well, now you have a toad that you didn't have to collect from the wild that you can make pinky mice smell like toads. That's kind of why I got them. But now that I have them, I'm super glad I got them. And, and even if all my hognose snakes eat fine this year, they're about to hatch. And if you want to know more about that, there's a video right here you can watch. I don't really care. I, uh, I, I'm i going to keep them anyway. I just think that they're really cool. I'm going to set up a bioactive enclosure um, once I've, I have them under quarantine. And just all in all, like, I don't really know what else to say. This isn't a true care guide. I just kind of wanted to showcase and show you why these toads are so awesome. Kind of show them off to you more than anything else. I don't know. What do you think? Do you like when I do videos like this? I did one like this about the spotted pythons. You can watch it here. Uh, everyone seemed to like these really cool, tiniest little pythons in the world. I just wanted to show a little spotlight. I don't talk about amphibians too much. I do have a whole rack of axolotls. But these guys, I don't know. I just think that they're a little bit different, more unique. Having a little shovel on the back of their foot that you can literally feel in your hand. When I had her in my hand, you can feel those keratinous projections digging into your hand. And it doesn't hurt. It just feels, well, it feels hard. It like Not like an animal. It feels kind of like, I don't know, a mini shovel trying to get into your skin. I don't know what else to say. If you like this video, please do hit subscribe. I really appreciate it. We're almost at 20,000 subscribers. We're doing a giveaway really soon. Check out that Spotted Python video if you want to enter, uh, get a chance to win a free shirt. Um, and of course, as always, patron supporters, thank you guys so much. I really appreciate it. If you're a patron on Patreon, you probably already knew about these toads because I posted it on there a few weeks ago. If you want to see some funny outtakes, bloopers, vlogs, just extra stuff, that is the place to go. And if you want to know about the other animal that I haven't told anybody about, I put that on Patreon as well. As always, hit that thumbs up and put the comment down below. What do you want to see me talk about next week? Every single video topic I take from you guys. You could be the inspiration for next week's video. Think I plugged. Subscribe. See you on Monday.